Hey guys, it's Trains in Disguise here. Today I'm going to be doing another story time. So hopefully you all enjoy. Today's story is called Bad Lookout. It's a continuation from the story Mountain Engines, which is uh, about the Coldy Fell Railway. And hopefully you all enjoy. Show that thumbs up and please subscribe if you haven't. And see you all later. Bad Lookout. Renaissance and Scarloy were talking quietly to Coldy the next morning when Duncan stormed up, followed by Sir Handel. Hello, chuckled Renaeus. Here we go. I nearly came off, fumed Duncan. Those coaches pushed me. The thing controller says they didn't. He says I kept a bad lookout. We've no money to mend you, he said, and if it happens again, I'll leave you at the back of the shed. Why does he always pick on me? It's not fair. Scarloy said nothing. He just winked at Reneas like this. As you were saying, Coldy, remarked Reneas, you had two coaches on your trial trip. Do you ever take more? No, our line is too steep uh, that we're only allowed one. We each have our own. Mine's called Catherine. I know her very well. That's most important. Why, asked Sir Handel. They're only coaches. Uh, ours, said Coldy, are something more. You pull your coaches and you can see ahead. We push ours so we can't see. They watch the line for us. The guard watches too, of course, but Catherine's so clever, I know at once if something is wrong. That must take a load off your mind, said Scarloy. Colty smiled, but not off my buffers. Climbing's hard work and needs a lot of steam. My fireman and I have a tiring time. Coming down, he went, it's different. Catherine and I just roll. We need no steam for that. Sir Handel sighed enviously. I should like that, he said. With your automatic brakes, it sounds like a rest cure. That, replied Coldy, was just the mistake poor Godred made. Who asked the little engines is Godred? Godred was our number one and named after a king. Coldy replied, perhaps, that went to his smoke back box and made him conceited. He'd never keep a good lookout. He'd roll down the line, looking anywhere but at the track. You'll have an accident, I told him. Pooh, he said. I've got automatic brakes, haven't I? And driver's got his air brake. What more do you want? More sense from you, I said. No engine can stop at once if he isn't ready to obey his driver's controls. The first thing a young engine learns, agreed Scarloy. Godred never learnt sense. His driver and fireman and the manager all spoke to him. They even took him to pieces to see if anything was wrong, but he still went on in the same old way. One day I was going up and waited at a station for Godred, coming down to pass me. As I waited, so it happened. One moment he was on the track, the next his driver and fireman jumped clear and he rolled over. Uh, no one was hurt. His coach stayed on the rails and the guard braked her to a stop. <clears throat> they bought Godred home the next day. We've no money to mend you, said our manager, so you'll go to the back of the shed. As time went on, poor Godred got smaller and smaller, till nothing was left. What What happened? asked Duncan anxiously. It's not nice to talk about, said Coldy. But what happened? Why isn't it nice? Our driver's used Godred's parts to mend us, answered Coldy mournfully. Sir Handel and Duncan were unusually silent 
long after Coldy had gone home. Neither Scarloe nor Reneas ever mentioned that Coldy had made the story up. The end.